everybody and welcome to D-Ray Shop. Today we're here working on a TRX 300 four wheel drive. You know the old Honda TRX 300 was a mainstay of Honda's ATV lineup for a number of years and these are good ATVs that have been around forever and the things are just rock solid reliable. Uh, what we're going to be concentrating on today is going to be the rear brakes. Now the customer recently had the rear brake shoes replaced on this ATV but uh, what he experienced afterward was the brakes just didn't have a real good feel on them and when they adjusted them up to where you had a good a lever and a good feel on the brake pedal they just seemed to squeal all the time and what was really odd about it is when you would turn the ATV to the left or the right the squealing would either get worse or almost go away completely and the only way they could get the squeak to go away all the time was just to back the brakes off but then what they ran into is they just didn't very, very have a didn't have a very effective brake uh, you know, normally what a person would want to look at when you run into a, a brake squealing problem is uh, normally they're not returning properly. So normally you'd look at the, the, the brake cables themselves or the brake cam where it goes into the brake panel because normally those will get rusty and they'll get to where they kind of stick and they don't want to return very well. On this particular ATV, all that's in good working order. The brakes are, brake cables are in good shape. The uh, brake arm is returning real well. A problem that's real common on this model of ATV is the axle bearing over on the right hand side. Now the axle bearings on the left side are actually encased within the final drive on the ring gear. So those bearings ride in a bath of 90-weight gear oil their entire life, so they have plenty of lubrication and they last a long time. There's only one bearing over on the right side that supports the entire weight of the ATV on that end, and that's just a sealed bearing. It just has a, just a simple grease seal and it's packed in its own grease and it's non-serviceable non so you can't pack it, can't lubricate it. And what happens is after a number of years, that bearing will start getting a little bit of wear in it and it allows that axle to float up and down a little bit which gets your brake drum out of center with the shoes and causes them to drag. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to remove the, uh, the brake panel on that side. We're going to take the brake panel completely off, show you how to get at that bearing, how to replace it. And also there's a few other things I'm going to show you along the way. Uh, there is a few things that need to be serviced on this rear axle. Anytime you've got that brake panel off, as far as grease and splines where the axle goes through the final drive at, that's another point of wear that tends to get overlooked that can uh, rust up and wear the splines off your axle and uh, cause your axle to fail to where it just quits pulling on the back end and that could be an expensive repair. But it's really easy to service. I'm going to show you guys how to do it so you all just hang loose and let's dive right in. Now the first thing you're going to want to do before you even take the wheels off is you want to get in here and loosen off these axle retaining nuts on both sides of the axle. It's a lot easier to do it while you still got the wheels in place because a lot of times these are rusted in place and they can be a real booger bear to get out. So take plenty of penetrating spray, spray up in the threads real good. If there's any mud or corrosion or rust in there, hit that a lick or two with a wire brush before you get started. Then just get you a big crescent wrench and have at it. But uh, get those broke loose where they'll turn freely on both sides and then we'll continue with uh, taking the wheels off and getting ready to take this brake panel apart. seen these little wing adjusters get so bound up on here that uh, you'd end up breaking the ears off of them getting them off and if you're not real careful you can actually twist the cable into them. Uh, so what I've done before just to save that cable uh, you can back it off as far as you can without without breaking the end of the cable off. You can actually take a cutting torch and 
melt these little aluminum adjusters off and that way you can save the, the cable because this is a lot cheaper than a cable I guarantee you. Okay. As you can see here our, our brake is returning real good so we know it's not froze up and like I said earlier our cables are in good shape so we're going to go ahead and take the rest of this off. Alright, so now we're going to take off the six screws that holds the brake drum cover on. Now once you got all that hardware out of the way, there's a little slot in the brake panel right here where you can put a screwdriver in and ease that brake cover off, just like that. And that's going to expose our brake drum. One other thing you want to look at, uh, and probably just plan on replacing while you're in here, there's a seal right here that seals that brake drum, keep moisture and stuff from getting in there. And uh, normally, unless that's just in perfect condition, you just pretty much want to plan on, on replacing that. So we'll set this aside. Okay, so we get ready to take this brake drum off. There's a little O-ring in here. You want to take you a little pick tool, get a little bite on that there O-ring, and be sure and pull that out of there because otherwise that drum is not going to want to come off of there. Well, after fighting with this brake drum for a little while and determining it's rusted on there pretty good, uh, you want to avoid the temptation of hitting this axle or anything with a hammer or anything like that because it's so easy to damage where the seal runs or where the threads are on the end of the axle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove all the hardware from this end of the axle. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the, the drum, the axle, and the entire brake panel out of this end of the, the final drive as one assembly. And then what I'll do is I'll put this in the press, and then I'll just press the axle out. That way I don't have to worry about damaging the drum or anything like that. And then uh, we'll proceed with our repair. Okay, we've got all the, the attaching hardware loose on the left side of the axle next to the differential. So you want to take that loose. You've got a, a washer here, and don't forget, there's another little O-ring that's stuffed up between the axle and the ring gear. So just reach in there with a pry tool and pry that out or otherwise that'll cause you a lot of problems trying to get that axle to slide out of there. Okay, we've got all the hardware loose from here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a composition hammer so I don't damage the threads on the end of the axle. If you're going to be it on an axle or a brake drum or anything like that, that's the only thing you want to touch it with. Don't ever beat on it with a regular hammer or you'll booger up the end of the axle, swell it up, and then you'll never get the castle nut back on there again. So, just going to tap that on through so you can see the whole brake panel moving away from the axle. There we go. Just like that. I'm going to slide the entire axle out there. This is why it's important to take this axle out ever so often and inspect it. These are the splines that actually run on the ring gear. And as you can see, those are pretty rusty. The good thing about it is, is the splines are still in good shape. So what we'll do is we're going to clean that up with a wire wheel, buff it down real good. Then before we reinstall the axle, we're going to grease all this up real good. And that way it'll keep you from wearing, wearing that axle out. What you can also see here... You're also getting a good look at that bearing in there, and you can see all that rust and water and corrosion that's, that's built up in there over the years. That's why that uh, bearing tends to go bad, because there's no way to get at it to lubricate it. So uh, we're going to move over to the press now and see if we can't press this thing out.